Hello YouTube! Today I'm doing my May wrap up for 2017. So it's summer, I'm at home which means I can read much more, I have time for it. It makes filming a bit hard because people constantly yell in this house. So I'm on my 8th book this month if I've calculated right. When I first got back um, from uni I picked up a Swedish book because I haven't read anything in Swedish for a very long time. And that book is Jag är tyvärr död och kan inte komma till skolan idag which translates to I'm unfortunately dead and can't come to school today by Sara Olsson and this book was good. Um, I thought the title sort of, I thought it was going to be a little bit deeper uh, which is kind of what I hoped for um, but it was a little bit more like a girl trying to get over break up with boy um, starts to hook up with loads of people. It wasn't anything special. The reviews made it uh, sound so, so good and I was, eh. It was a good book. I enjoyed it. Um, it was kind of nice just to read in Swedish, but that was about it. So after that, I decided to read Time Riders by Alex Garrow. And I've got the complete series and I have wanted to read this book for ages because my brother gave the whole series to me um, when he was throwing books out. And I thought, now's the time to read it, because I don't know what other book to read. I got to about page 164 and decided that this book wasn't really... I'm not saying it's not for me, because I would really like to continue reading these books. And the sequels all seem amazing. But it wasn't the kind of book I wanted to read at the time. I was not feeling a book of that had like war in it. At all. I was kind of feeling sci-fi but I didn't want, maybe I didn't really know what I wanted. Turns out that, yeah, around page 150, um, time has been altered because uh, the Nazis took over the world and it's then 2001 and literally America is ruled by Nazis. Yeah, I wasn't really feeling that kind of book at the time. So I literally just stopped reading it. I was like, I'm not going to finish this book at, right now. I might get back to it in a month or two. I really do want to read them, but it was just wasn't the kind of book I was into right now. So when I got back from uni, I had a bit of anxiety. Um, literally, uni was so much. Um, there was stuff all the time I like didn't have time to feel tired because I had so many friends, so much going on and then literally the course ended and I had nothing to do and I felt literally just, it got a little bit too much. So I came home not feeling too great and when I stopped reading Time Riders and I realised that wasn't the book I wanted to read, there wasn't a single book on my shelf I wanted to read and I've got a lot of books, I've got about 500 books in my room and from the books in my room I've read about 150. That doesn't include like ebooks and library books. From the books I've got in my room, I've got read about 150. So I've got about 350 books I haven't touched in my room. I've got loads to choose from. But there was nothing I wanted to read. I got about six books out, asked my mum to choose, and there was nothing I wanted to read. Nothing. The thing is, I was so low during these days. Reading was kind of the only thing I knew I liked to do and I couldn't find a book and if you can't find a book that you enjoy reading then you feel like you're forcing yourself to read and that just wasn't helping. Mum gave me The Girl of Ink and Stars. Now she knew I wanted to read this and we'd found herself at Wardstones two days ago and I pointed it out and somehow she just literally bought it under my nose without me realising. And this book totally got me back on track. It took me about a day and a half to read because I'm a very slow reader and I was sort of just literally trying to read. And this book is wonderful, it's so beautiful, like, like it's got little, oh you can't see it on the screen, but it's got little art around sort of like the font. It's got map, it's got two maps actually. Um, it's just such a, it's so, it's so lovely and I know it's a middle grade book from age 9 to 12, but it's magic, it's friendship, it's, it's just so, so wonderful. So if you want something that's short, it's a standalone, which I thought was pretty good right now. Uh, this book is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. During this time as well, I was reading um, my 10 year old sister's sort of goodnight stories and um, we started reading um, 
a series of unfortunate events, The Bad Beginning. I've wanted to read a series of unfortunate events for ages and I got this book last summer and um, I started reading it with my sister because she started watching the uh, TV series uh, on Netflix. So, um, and we, we got through this in about two weeks. Um, it was great. I really love it and I think we'll start the second one very soon. So while I was reading A Girl of Ink and Stars, I was really sort of like, I really wanted to read this new book. Mom wanted me to read a comedy. When you're not feeling great, it's um, good to make yourself laugh, even if you have to force yourself to laugh. So I was going to read a comedy. But while I was reading The Girl of Ink and Stars, I was really like, really young for this book, which I've had on my shelf for about half a year. And everyone seems to have read it. I picked up this other book, which is a sci-fi. So not Time Riders. Um, and I sort of made a deal with my mum that I needed to, to watch a comedy TV series or TV show if I wasn't going to read a comedy. Um, and that book is a Red Queen that I started reading. Oh wow, that doesn't show up well on the, on, on the screen. How about that? Yeah. Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Oh my god. Um, I was a little bit fooled by the cover. Well, I shouldn't say that because the, the cover is accurate, but I believe that this was sort of a fantasy. I thought it was along the lines with Throne of Glass. Um, it's not. It's more of um, it's more like Divergent, if you want to group books. It's a sci-fi. Uh, a little bit of fantasy. I, I just I like this so much. There will be a written review on my blog very shortly. I've literally um, written it. I'm just waiting to post it. Um, and it's so, 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 so good. Um, I don't want to spoil it you. Um, I'll talk more about that in our review and discussion video, why I don't want to spoil it for you. I'm going to leave it at that. Naturally, after I read The Red Queen, I read A Glass Sword because I have that book as well. Wow, these really don't show up well on the on the camera. Again, just great sequel. So It's one of the best sequels I've ever read. Sometimes when you, when you read a trilogy or, or a series and you read the first book and the first book sort of sets it all up, it's all exciting, and then it just goes downhill. And you expect the other books to be like the first book, but they're not because that's because of the plot and you can't do anything about it. Um, but it never really matches up to how the series started out. This sequel, however, was amazing. So, so good. Of course, you're going to think that I read King's Cage afterwards which is the third book I don't have it in my possession and I've sort of made myself read books that I have in my possession because I don't want to I don't have a lot of money at the moment and like I said I've got 350 books in my room that I haven't read so I sort of want to tick them off my list um, and get them read and out of the way um, so I'm trying not to buy a lot of books I say that but I've bought four books this month but while I was reading Glasswood, and I knew I couldn't read King's Cage because I don't have it, um, I started really wanting to read this other book called Sigrid. Um, now, this book is a Swedish book, and it's about Vikings, and I am addicted to Vikings. I love the Vikings in every way. There aren't enough books written about Vikings. I mean, there are loads of books written about Vikings, so I shouldn't shouldn't say that, I just don't have them. Um, but this is a great, great book. Um, it's got a very strong female protagonist. It's about Sigrid, which is, uh, which is a known um, Viking queen. It's about her her life um, during her teens, and I'll just, just mm, it's so good. It's available in English, um, and it's totally, I know some people might be critical to reading in another language, I personally don't like reading English books in Swedish, as in translated books. Hate it. If I can read English books in English, I will read them in English. And if I want to read in Swedish, I genuinely pick a book written by a Swedish author because I feel like they're better in their original language. But truly, this is, if you want fantasy, magic, historical fiction, Vikings, this is the book for you. Um, it's sort of, I think it's advertised as sort of like a, a women's book. Um, it was given to me by my grandma. My grandpa complained that it was an old women's book and I was like, trying not to be offended. My grandparents read a lot and I usually like what they read but my grandpa leans towards the crime genre and I don't get along with that. This is so good. It's a romance. It's just got the Norse gods in it. Which leads me on to the next book I read, which is 
Estrid. Now, Estrid is about Sigrid's daughter, so this is about 15 years later, and it's the second book in a supposed trilogy. It ends in a way that you want there to be a third book, and people have referred to it as a trilogy, so I certainly hope there is a third book. I'm just going to strangle our lovely author here, Johanna Hildebram. She doesn't write a third book. So this is 15 years later, so it keeps, it follows um, Sigrid again uh, in her 30s. Her um, romance with Sven and it also follows her daughter and it's <laughs> this is a good good viking book truly good so then i went back to uni to see my friends the last time so i didn't read for about four days um and then i came home again struggling a little bit to decide what book i want to read but i was totally sold on 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 historical fiction like after the viking books i just for some reason i was I haven't read anything in historical fiction for ages. I've, I've sort of tried to read the books that have come out this year and um, the the sort of high anticipated young adult books. So I haven't read a lot of historical fiction and I tend to pick those books from um, the adults' um, bookshelves. Um, there is great young adult historical fiction. There is such great quality in Philippa Gregory's books. So I decided to read The Constant Princess by Philippa Gregory. If you don't know who Philippa Gregory is, she wrote uh, the book The Other Boleyn Girl and there is a film with Natalie Portman, uh, Scarlett Johansson and Eric Bana in that film. Great film. The book is even better. I've got a review on my blog about The Other Boleyn Girl and totally check that out. Um, so that is about Mary Boleyn and Anne Boleyn and their relationship with Henry VIII. Um, and sort of how Anne Boleyn became the second queen of Henry VIII. The Constant Princess is about Catherine of Aragon and how she was first married to Henry VIII's older brother, Arthur, and how Henry VIII then married her when Arthur died. And I, as you can see, I haven't finished. I'm only telling you that because I know the story of Catherine of Aragon because I generally know um, the history of Henry VIII's wives. Um, and you might say, oh, doesn't that just spoil the book? Yes, I suppose it spoils the book if you know the general history about the person it's written about. But, um, Philippa Gregory weaves in a little bit of fiction to fill in the holes where, um, just what people don't know what happened. She's filled in with her own great, sort of, ideas of what could have happened. She's truly talented. It is written in such a capturing way, and you might be like, I don't like adult books. I like how young adult books are written. Um, I think all of her books are sort of in a little bit of a different writing style, and I really like this. This is um, written in third person, so and it's got sort of an omniscient narrator, so you get what everyone is feeling. But then there are sort of sections written in first person in italics from Catherine's point of view. Um, so you get a deeper understanding for her and it's so great and I, I'm just, I've gone through a very tough patch here, I'm trying to calm down <laughs> um, after what's just happened. Even though I knew it was going to happen because I know what happens in her life, but it still killed me. So, you know, um, I'm going to finish that um, in now the beginning of June. I'm not going to do a big book haul because it's literally four books, it's not worth it. So this month I promised myself to not buy any books except Lord of Shadows because was released this month and I can't not buy it. So I don't have a Waterstones close to me, I need to go to Windsor or Staines, like I need to take the car to go to Waterstones. Um, there's a WH Smith however on my high street and when Lady Midnight came out it was on the sort of like um, top 10 shelf um, of WH Smith so I was like great Lord of Shadows is going to be there. I go to WH uh, Smith uh, about two days, two or three days after it's released because I didn't have the time. Um, it's not there. It's not there. I literally check all the shelves. I can't find it. And they're like, I promised myself I would buy a book. So, um, I bought two Philippa Gregory books. I got The White Queen and The Red Queen because they've got new covers, by the way. Look, I quite, quite like them. If you don't know, The White Queen is actually a TV series. Um, by BBC? I don't know. And it's great. It's so good. I think it's only one season. That's the only thing I've got on DVD. Uh, but it sort of inter interweaves the Red Queen, the, the 
the White Queen um, and uh, the White Princes is another book. This is this literally happens before the Constant Princess. This is the Cousins' War, which is the War of um, the Ro the Roses, Lancaster and York, the Red Roses, the White Rose, which later on leads on to the Tudors. So um, I've got these books in Swedish because my grandma gave them to me. But like I said, I prefer reading English books in English. So I got myself these books, and it was about fifteen pounds. But don't tell anyone. So then I finally found myself at Waterstones in Windsor and I literally made my whole family wait outside while I went in to grab it. So I go in and they usually have these like tables of get one, get one half price. And um, last time, um, and usually the new releases are on that table. So I'm expecting they're like, oh, I'm gonna get two books, you know, for the price of one and a half. So I was expecting to buy two books. And I expected to see it there it wasn't that I panicked I literally panicked I don't know what to do I was like I can't leave the shop without a copy of this book like I'm actually in winter right now I was honestly desperate turn around and there's a whole table dedicated to Lord of Shadows I was so relieved literally there was all the Shadowhunter books there it was great um and again it's got like this little blue pages I think Lady Midnight was like turquoisey, the slightly different shades of blue, but I am so pleased. So you're probably wondering, what was the other book you got there? I got there and I couldn't choose because I was stressed and I usually like to take my time at Waterstones. My whole family was waiting outside, I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, which book do I choose? There's like, like three little tables put together for this like, um, buy one get one half price. And they're all new releases, which kind of means that they're sequels or like, you know, last like the new releases so I was like I can't buy sequels of books I don't own and oh, what did I find Ink by Alice Broadway now I've wanted to read this because the cover is beautiful um, and it says literally the only description there is is the truth will get under your skin and there's a little bit more information on the inside um there are no secrets in Saint Stone Imagine a world where your every action, your every deed is marked on your skin for all to see. And Leora has something to hide. Ink is the story about love, loyalty and the desire to live forever. It's a tale that gets under your skin. I don't know, it seems like a standalone. Um, and I quite like standalones because there's so many series nowadays. We have to catch up on loads of books. Um, beautiful cover and I was the only one I really recognised that I knew I wanted to read so I just grabbed it and left. There's my little May wrap up of books I've read and bought. So the plan for June is I'm going to review all the books I've read and I'm going to review and discussion out for each of the books um, each week. That is my plan and I hope we'll make it. And since my birthday is the 11th of June, it's my birth month, I've decided to treat you a little bit. I found that there are loads of books at home that I've read but I haven't reviewed on my blog. So you will get, if I can keep my promise, you will get one review every day of the month of June. Which means that literally every day I am going to give you a new review of a book on my website. That's a written review and then every week I'm going to give a video review and a video discussion of one of the books that I've read this month and it might even be more than that seeing as I've read about eight books this month and they're about what four weeks a month hopefully that'll be a good month for you all um but that's all for now thank you very much bye